Hey, Crossing Church Life Group, we are so glad that you've stuck with us for the last five weeks and you've been diving down into all of these scriptures. We've been learning about these stories on the weekend and then going deeper in our life groups and being challenged together. I hope you've really developed some uh, great relationships and you're just getting stronger, iron sharpening iron, as you're sharing the things that God is uh, teaching you or directing you to. We're going to talk about uh, Zacchaeus uh, today. When I was thinking about this, I thought about something that happens in my life, maybe in yours. Have you ever been just totally broadsided by someone? They just come at you. You're not prepared for it. You don't have any way of defending yourself. You don't have any words. You're not witty enough. And they just hammer you with something and walk off. And then you're just like, oh, I just don't have anything I can say. And then later on, you're thinking about it and you're turning it over in your mind. And uh, maybe you're in the car and you have this like totally awesome conversation with them where you're coming in with these jabs and you have all these clever rebuttals and all this stuff, except for you're the only one in the car. You ever done that? I've done that before. And I feel like I'm trying to compensate for something that happened. You know, it's it's powerful when someone takes something away from you, even if it's just a piece of a moment. But it might be more profound than that. Some of you, like me, have dealt with other things, like where you've been marginalized, or maybe there were people who bullied you or offended you in some way, or did something like really awful, and then your life reflects the results of those circumstances. I wonder what Zacchaeus' circumstances were. When I read the story, I get this feeling that he's compensating for something, probably some pretty deep hurt in his life. We know that he's short. Uh, uh, at least he can't see over the crowd. That's why he climbs up in a tree, uh, you know, in order to see Jesus. But there's more to it. Like if he's taking money from people. He's amassing all this wealth. It feels to me like he's got something to prove. He's got something that he feels like that's out there that he needs to earn. You know why I think I get that? Because I do the same thing. Uh, and, and you know, I, in my life, I've tried to direct that into positive areas uh, to move that energy towards success or to give God glory. But beneath it, sometimes it comes from the wrong place, a bad place. And so that means that there are areas in my life that are out of place. And I'm sure that there are areas out of place in Zacchaeus' life. You know what's really amazing to me in this story, as you guys study it together, is how little it took for Zacchaeus to completely change, to flip his life all the way over and for, so that it didn't even resemble what it looked like. It's like an Ebenezer Scrooge story. It's like the one day he was this way and the next day he was completely another way. Makes me also wonder how much money he had. What kind of a fortune did he have when he said, everything I own, I want to give half of it to the poor. Would I do anything like that? I mean, that's a big big statement. He also said, if I've wronged anyone, I'll repay them back four times. It was two times under Jewish law, but he doubled that. And do you know what it took for Zacchaeus to make this huge, giant, enormous change in his life? Lunch. That's what it took. Lunch. And he was the one who provided it. I mean, Jesus said, I'm coming to your house today. He had lunch with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus even paid for the lunch. But all it took was that lunch and that time with Jesus for him to part with all of these things that just before that he thought was so valuable. It makes me wonder how many things in my life are so valuable to me and that I would want to part with them and how much of that is compensating for motives that are inside my heart that don't really need even to be there anyway. Isn't it interesting just how uh, extreme uh, Zacchaeus responds to this in powerfully positive ways? And he is just one story of so many stories in the Bible 
where people make this change and it is so profound and happens so quickly. You know what they're doing? They're wrecking the roof. And, you know, that's what we've been encouraging you to consider. Wrecking your roof. What is it inside your heart that needs to change? And how should that affect radically your generosity? That's why this week you're going to get one of these. You're going to get a a Wreck the Roof commitment card. And you need to look it over. You need to pray over it. You need to uh, talk to your spouse about it. You need to pull your family in together. You need to really seriously evaluate this area of your life. You know, Jesus said where a person's uh, treasure is, that's where their heart is. And so there's a, a pretty short road between the two of these things. And we want you to really consider what it means to wreck your roof in this way. Now, we have a great story for you. Uh, today that one of the people of our church is going to share with you from their heart as a reflection of their life. So as you're considering this, listen to what they have to say. I'm Corey Miller and this is my beautiful wife, Jenny. We have three kids and we go to the Kirksville Crossing. Uh, We've been going there for about five years now. With our family in general, I mean, we've had a a pretty rough go. Uh, A few years back, we were financially not in a very good place and we just had a lot of anxiety about finances and just our relationship we were newly married and you know it's not easy and we'd have arguments and I would say one of the first decisions we made um, to change was when we started tithing Um, that gets real I mean yeah when you're, you're putting money out there, you know, you're letting it go, relying upon God to take care of you. We just decided, like, if we're going to make it through all of this, we're going to have to, you know, start following God. It was immediately we could see, like, a plan start to unfold in our journey. And ever since then have sit, like, faithfully all that we could and and there's been several times where we were challenged like even more you know something comes up you'll be doing good with your finances and stuff and then get into like a a little rough pinch lots of need to put tires on your vehicle you know lots of expenses and it's like do you just not tithe this week and you know save the extra money or um we haven't, we always made the decision, no, we're going to tithe because we wouldn't be in the position we're in now if we hadn't. What I want to share with someone that is considering giving for the first time, I would say it's definitely worth it to take the leap of faith, to just do it, even though you might not trust just do it, write that check, just trust that the Lord will be there, and just give, and He will provide. I feel like the crossing is a great investment because every sermon, it truly speaks right to my heart. Um, I learn something every single Sunday I come. I apply it daily to my life. Our kids have learned so much through the children's ministry. I can't imagine not having our children in church at at the crossing. It's been a really good, positive experience for them. We're really excited to see what God's gonna do through Wreck the Roof, and it's all about being generous, and I'm excited to see how much the crossing grows as a family and, you know, as a church. It's It's going to be exciting.